Hi there guys, um, I've got some spare time in the workshop so I just thought I'd do a quick and dirty video on how to set your Machine Z reference figure. So that is this figure here. If we go into the tool setup page, more and tool measurement screens, that's this Z reference figure here. So maybe you've accidentally deleted this by accident or you've had a bit of a knock on the machine and you think this could have changed or maybe you've lit the apprentice on here and he's accidentally uh, deleted it. First of all, I'm gonna get straight to the point and I'm gonna tell you how to reset your Z reference and then I'm actually gonna explain why you need it. So you'll need two things to be able to reset this Z reference. The first is a slip. This is a 100 mil slip. It doesn't have to be 100 millimeters. It could be 50, it could be 20. It doesn't matter as long as you know what length the slip is. And the next thing you'll need is a tool of a known length. Now we have this mandrel, which has some um, figures engraved on it with the length and diameter. But if you don't have a mandrel or a tool of a known length, you could create one. So you could measure a tool like this and put a pin in there and find out what the exact height is. Or a tool like this and find out what the height is. It doesn't matter too much as long as it's flat and you know exactly what the height is. The other way of doing it is you could take the tool off any other Herco machine as long as you're sure that the settings in that machine are okay and you could take the length of that tool and use that as your length for setting the Z reference. As long as it's a trusted figure and you're happy with it. Then you're gonna grab your tool of a known length and pop it into your empty spindle. Then you're going to grab your slip, pop it on the table, and start winding your spindle down in Z until you get onto the slip. Now, a good way to set this, or to bring this tool down on top of the slip, is to wind the spindle down in Z until it actually is below the slip. See, like that? Then you don't crunch the slip. Then you go into sort of 10% and start winding the Z up. There we go, you see how that just slips under there now? And then you can knock the control down into 1% jog. And then I like to just move this, shift it around a little bit, make sure it's moving, and just slowly, slowly, incrementally bring that down in 1% 1, 1 increments, 1% clicks on the jog handle until it just starts to nip up. Okay, you see how that's starting to get tight now? I'll literally go a couple of more increments until it's tight. And that's now set. All right, so now we have our tool of a known length in the spindle jogged down onto our slip of a known length. Then you're gonna to go to your tool setup page, more tool measurement settings. And this is the Z reference figure here that we wanna change. So I'm gonna go storm machine position. It's gonna ask you and say, this is a crucial length. Do you definitely want to change it? Yes. You see how that figure's changed? It's about 200 millimeters difference from what the figure last was. Now that 200 millimeter difference is actually because our slip is 100 mil and our tool of a known length is about 100 mil. What you're then gonna do is, is you're gonna add on the length of your 100 mil slip and the tool but it's always gonna be a big minus figure you'll have in here, never a positive one. So I'm gonna go 100 minus enter. Yes, that's now up by another 100 millimeters. Now, if we look at our tool, you can see this is 100.01 millimeters. So we're also gonna add that on. Highlight the Z reference, 100.01 minus enter and there we go that's our z reference figure and if you're a little bit unsure about using the calculator on the hercos you can just write these figures out and add them together on paper so we have our z reference figure which is our figure we've got by putting our mandrel or our tool of a known length down onto our slip then you add on our slip which is 100 mil which would take that to minus 663 
Again, you're adding, but you're going in the minus direction. So you're always going to end up with a bigger minus figure. So we add on our slip figure, and then we add on our mandrel figure, or tool of a known length, which is 100.01, and that gets us to this final figure here. So you could just do this in a calculator, add this up, and then type this minus figure into the Z reference as well if you wanted to. So that big minus Z reference figure is actually the top of the table up to our Z home. Now, in theory, if we could bring this spindle gauge line right down to the bed, we would just simply be able to hit store machine position and that would be it. But we can't do that because A, there's drive dogs in the way for this tool and B, the spindle gauge line isn't actually this line here. It's actually slightly inside the spindle, just within the taper, so you wouldn't be able to bring that down. And C, if you were to bring this down onto the bed, if it was even possible, how would you be able to tell when there's resistance in the slip? How would you be able to tell if you're actually on there or putting too much pressure on there or too little? You wouldn't be able to. So that's why we set it this way. So hopefully that makes sense, that that Z reference figure is the top of the table to just inside the spindle, or what we call the spindle gauge line. If you were to stick a big ruler in there, you'd find, well you wouldn't be able to, but you'd find that that Z reference figure would be the same amount as that distance right there. Now it's a be all end all figure, so if you've got tool and part probing or you're on a specifically a five axis machine, um, you need this in here and it needs to be as accurate as you can get it. In fact, what we also do when we're on five axis machines is we'll normally run a couple of spindle warm up cycles just to take into account any spindle growth and stuff like that. What do I mean by a be all end all figure? Well, this is the figure that governs everything. So all your measurements for your probe and stuff like that. It's telling the machine where this table is. And so from there, well, if we take this 100 millimeter slip and place this next to our tool setter, you can see it's not quite 100 mil. This is actually sitting just above 100 mil, maybe 103, 102, something like that. And then if we come back and look at our figures in the machine, we can see our probe height is set to 102 millimeters. So that 102 millimeters is 102 millimeters off the bed. So that's why we need this to be perfect because everything else runs from that figure, especially five axis. If you're on a basic three axis machine, it doesn't have to be perfect. But as soon as you get onto five axis, this figure really has to be as best as you can get it. So I hope that helps you guys out. Um, maybe you've got a training manual or you've kind of done it before but you couldn't remember how to do it. And I hope this video just helps you out get it done nice, quick and easily. All right, cheers guys.